Hello students, welcome to math. I'm sorry I'm not there again today, and if you're watching this on Canvas, I'm sorry you're not at school either. Let's get started with our self-start. Now you should have noticed that around the room, some signs have been hung up with different inequality symbols. Everybody take a look, see where they all are. And now point at the sign that you think goes with the word budget. Everybody pointing? All right, when I think about these, I like to put a number with them so that I can understand it conceptually. And if I say, all right, I've got a $20 bill in my hand. That's my budget is $20. Can I spend less than $20? Yes, absolutely. Can I spend more than $20? No, I can't. So I'm going to have a less than symbol but then my next question is, can I spend $20? If I have a $20 bill in my hand, I can spend $20. So I will have the equal sign. It should be less than or equal to goes with budget. All right, everybody look around the room. Point at the sign that you think goes with at least. Everybody got one? All right, if it's at least 10, then it can't be less than 10, it has to be greater than 10. And is 10 at least 10? Yes, it is. 10 is at least 10, so we have our underline or equal sign. Okay, everybody point at the sign that you think goes with at most. All right, for at most, I cannot have more than my number. Let's say 75 this time. At most 75, I cannot have more than 75, so I'm going to have less than 75. And is 75 okay in this situation? Yes. At most, I can have 75, so I can have 75. I just can't have any more than that, which leads us right to the next one. No more than. Everybody point at the sign you think goes with no more than. Well, no more than and at most are synonyms, so once again, I'm going to have the less than or equal to sign. Now, no more than is the opposite of no less than. So no less than. Find the sign that you think goes with no less than. And hopefully you said greater than or equal to, because we cannot be less than. We must be greater than. And a number say the number five is not less than itself, so it is included. Fewer than, everybody point at the sign you think means fewer than. All right, fewer is another word for less. So we're gonna have less than, and this time there's no equal bar because we only want values that are fewer than our given value. All right, minimum, say I need a minimum of eight hours of sleep. If I need a minimum of eight hours, seven hours is not okay. I need to be greater than eight. But if I just get eight hours of sleep, I will be okay. So we do have the equal sign. And maximum, minimum and maximum, hopefully you realize are opposites again. So maximum, we're going to want less than or equal to. For example, I can drive a maximum of 80 miles an hour on the freeway. So I can drive 65, I can drive 45, but I can't drive 95. I have to be less than or equal to. All right, we have some classroom info for today. Our multi-step equations contest winners. This is from about a week and a half ago when we went around the room and did the green problems that were worth certain point values. These are our winners. First hour, Lincoln Davis. Second, Chris Stokes. Fourth, Emily Wynn. Fifth, Garrett Clough. And sixth, Catherine Pearson. Please be sure to get your prize from the substitute. I'm sorry I can't be there to give it to you in person. The next thing is that sixth hour will all be getting yellow positive tickets today because I did not have to send any emails home about improper use of Chromebooks for sixth hour last week. 
The other classes, unfortunately, there were several of you in each class that got emails about not staying on task and doing the things you were asked to do on your Chromebook. Please don't let that happen again this week. The penalties will be more severe if I have to repeat that. The last item of classroom info we have for today is that we are going to be having a homework contest for the rest of the trimester. Each week that your class has a 90% or higher completion rate for their homework packets, your class will get to choose their own seating chart. Now that means not just that people have to turn in their homework packets, but they have to be complete homework packets. If 90% of your class turns in their complete homework packet this Friday on Monday, you will get to pick your own seats. So hopefully that's some good incentive for you. Now what's going to happen in class today is going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. As I was grading your homework over the weekend, I was a little bit concerned. Um, Even the people who had turned in all of their worksheets were not getting the problems correct. Now normally what I do when I'm grading your homework is I look for completion and then I check a couple of problems that are common mistakes, common errors, and if you missed those problems then I'll make a note on there for you to look at. But I was having to make notes on practically every packet that I looked at. So what I decided that we would do today is everyone's going to pull out their orange homework packet. We're going to go through every problem together. At the end of class, everyone's going to turn their orange homework packet back into the basket to be regraded. Now this time when I look, I'm going to check those uh, couple of problems on each packet but this time you have to have them right because we're gonna do them all in class so no one has any excuse to not get the problems right. Now also what that means for those of you who got fours on your homework packets, it does not mean that you got every problem right. So I need you to check your work as we go today on every single problem. One more time folks, If I check your homework after today and you have a problem that's done incorrectly, you're going to get a zero on the homework packet. All right? So please stay with me. Fix your problems, fix your mistakes, and hand them in at the end of class. Now, if the video is going too fast and you need it to be paused for a minute, just let the substitute know and they will take care of that. All right, I'll give you a couple of seconds to get your homework packets ready and find inequalities week one, day one. It says use the number lines to express the inequalities. And it looks like this. All right, so we're going to begin with just these basic inequalities. There's nothing to even solve here. We just need to know how to graph our solution on the number line. So if I read this inequality, it says x is less than or equal to 180. And if you'll get in the habit of just reading that out loud to yourself, when you hear the word less than, it's going to help you decide which way your arrow goes. Right now, we do have a underline under the less than symbol which tells us that we're going to have a closed circle. Closed circle goes with that equal bar that's underneath the less than symbol. Now some people were confused about where to put that closed circle and one person Porter started in his explanation of one of these problems he called this number right here the starting number and I really liked that because that is exactly where our graph is going to start. So we're going to choose that 180 and we're going to again draw a closed circle right at 180 
and we're going to have the direction of our arrow. Since our variable's on the left, we can have the direction of the arrow match the inequality symbol. And the other way to think about that is just you want the numbers that are less than 180. So we're gonna draw our arrow that way. Now you'll notice that I'm not drawing directly on the number line, and that's a good trick for you guys, especially when you just have your thin pencil and you're trying to write on a worksheet with a really thick number line on it. You don't have to write directly on the number line. You can go a little bit below or above it, and that's just fine. This is still a correct answer. Okay, our next one, again, I'm gonna read it to myself. X is greater than or equal to negative 11. Again, I have an equal sign bar, so I'm gonna have a closed circle at negative 11. Whoops, closed circle at negative 11. And this time my arrow wants the values that are greater than, so I'm gonna go this direction. Last one, x is less than 130. My circle goes at 130, but this time it's an open circle because I don't have that equal bar, so it's an open circle and my arrow is going to go to the left. Now down here we're supposed to do the opposite. We're supposed to go backwards and create the inequality that describes the graph. So in every inequality, I want you guys to be in the habit of putting your variable on the left. Everybody write down x on the left, and then we're gonna have some inequality symbol, and then where is our starting number on this graph? Can you guys see? Hopefully you can see it's at negative two. The dot is at negative two. So if I have my x in place and I have my negative two in place, all I need to figure out now is what symbol goes in my circle. Well, it's a closed circle at negative two, so I know I'm gonna have that equal bar underneath. And then my arrow is going to the right, so my inequality symbol is also gonna to go to the right. Number five, same thing, I want an x on the left. I want some inequality symbol, and then my starting number, like Porter said, is number five. All right, now this time I have an open circle, so I'm not gonna have that equality bar under the inequality. And my arrow is going to the left, so my symbol is gonna be less than, x is less than five. On number six, again, x, some inequality symbol, negative 10 is my starting number. This time it's a closed circle, so I have my equality bar, and then the arrow goes to the left. Number seven, x, some inequality, and 16 goes on that side. My circle is open, so I don't have the bar underneath the symbol, and my arrow goes to the right. Now, when do you use an open circle when graphing an inequality? I got a wide variety of answers on this one. The correct answers are less than or greater than. Those are the two times when you would use an open circle. When do you use a closed circle when graphing an inequality? Well, if you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to then you would use that closed circle. All right, if you need a couple of minutes, just ask the sub to pause the video, and we are going to go on to our next homework assignment. All right, homework assignment number two starts off the same way homework assignment number one did, with x is less than 7. Now, once again, there's nothing to solve here. We just need to figure out where to graph this inequality. Um, there's no labels on my number line, so I can choose seven wherever I want. I'm gonna stick it right there. I have an open circle. I don't have any equal line under there, so I have an open circle at seven, and my arrow goes to the left, the same direction as the inequality. Again, the only time that trick works is when your variable is on the left. All right, variable still on the left on this one, so we're gonna be able to use our trick again. This time we have a negative four. I can pick wherever I wanna put that. This time I have a closed circle at negative four, and my arrow is gonna to go to the right this time. 
Now we're going to solve some simple equations and graph our solution. Sorry, we're going to solve some simple inequalities, and that's the first problem that I saw on a lot of these. People were drawing their fence, and down at the bottom was x equals something. Please, 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 please never draw an equal sign on an inequality assignment or feedback. Just get out of that habit. We do not want an equal sign. We want an inequality sign. And in a lot of cases, and especially on this assignment, our inequality sign that we begin with is going to be our same symbol that we end with. We'll talk more about when that changes on the next assignment. But for this one, we don't have any divide by negative numbers, so these are all going to stay the same. Now, 10x is less than or equal to 110. I need to get rid of that 10 so that I can end up with x by itself. The way I do that is divide by 10 on both sides. Divide by 10 on both sides. 10 divided by 10 leaves me with 10x divided by 10 leaves me with just x. 110 divided by 10 is 11. So I have x is less than or equal to 11, and now it's just the same as these first problems that we did. I can put 11 anywhere I want on that number line. I have a closed circle at 11 and my arrow goes to the left. You have to do both things. Some people were just graphing their solution. Some people were just solving the inequality. You have to do both. You have to solve it and graph your solution. All right, 8x minus 3 is greater than 21. Set up my fence. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. 8x minus 3 plus 3 leaves me with just 8x over here. 21 plus 3 is 24 over here. I need to get rid of that 8, so I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides. And I have x is greater than 3. Again, don't write x equals 3. x does not equal 3. We need to get out of that habit and remember that we're using inequalities. All right, I'm going to put 3 on my number line. x is greater than 3, not equal to 3. So I have an open circle, and I want the arrow to go to the right to give me the numbers like 4, 5, 6, all the numbers that are bigger than, greater than 3. Number 5, more practice writing the inequality from the graph. So we're going to start with our variable on the left-hand side. We're going to have some inequality symbol, and our starting point this time, our closed circle, is at negative 20. Since I have a closed circle, I will need the underline, and the arrow goes to the left. On number 6, same thing, variable, inequality symbol. Our starting point this time is at negative 2. I don't have a colored in circle. It's an open circle, so I don't need the underline and then my arrow goes to the right this time. All right, two homework assignments done. Again, if you need the sub to pause the video, just let them know. And we are gonna go on to week one, day three, which is where we learned about flipping the sign. Now, it's very, very important that all of you pay attention to this assignment. This is the one that I saw the most problems with. Okay, there's a very simple way to know how to flip, if you need to flip the sign or not. And we're going to answer that question for all four of these problems first. The way you look, the way you know is you block out everything else about your equation and you only look at the coefficient that is right in front of your variable. Okay, that's all you need to pay any attention to. The rest of this, just ignore it. Okay, if the number that's right in front of that variable is positive, you do not flip the sign. Number one is a positive eight, so I do not flip the sign. On the second one, I have negative 10x, whoops, negative 10x. Okay, I don't care about anything else that's happening in this problem. 
that 10 is negative, which means at the end of my solution, I'm going to have to divide by a negative 10. If I multiply or divide by a negative when I'm solving this problem, I have to flip the sign. So if that coefficient on that variable is negative, then yes, I have to flip the sign. All right, take a second, everybody think about, am I going to flip the sign on this problem, yes or no? Three seconds to think. Call out your answer. Yes, that's a negative three. We have to flip the sign on that problem because we're going to divide by a negative. Nothing else in the problem matters. Only that negative three matters. Okay, last one. Again, I've got a negative over here. I've got all this stuff. The only thing I care about is the 2x. Get rid of everything else. Class, do I flip the sign? Hopefully you all called out. No, I do not flip the sign on that one. All right, now I'm going to get rid of the scribbling I just did so that we can solve these inequalities and graph them. Okay, that was another problem I saw in this worksheet. Some people didn't answer any of the questions. Some people only answered the questions. Some people drew graphs but didn't solve. Let's do all the parts of all four problems. It is, after all, only four problems, folks. All right, here's our fence. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this minus 3. So I'm going to add 3 on both sides. Folks, if you don't know what to get rid of first, I need you to go back into Canvas on your free time and watch the onion layers video, please, to help you decide what to get rid of first. Okay, 8x minus 3 plus 3 is going to leave me with just 8x. 21 plus 3 is 24. Hey, I feel like we just did this problem. That's all right, we'll do it again. Divide by eight, divide by eight. Eight X divided by eight is X. And I did not flip my sign, so my greater than is gonna stay. 24 divided by eight is three. Over here, I'll draw three on my number line. It's only greater than, not greater than or equal to, so I have an open circle and my line is going to go in the direction of the bigger numbers to the right. Okay, give myself some space here. Negative 10x is less than or equal to 110. Now, we said we're going to flip the sign. And we are because we have to divide both sides by negative 10. Divide by negative 10. Anytime I multiply or divide by a negative number, I have to flip the sign. So in this, at this point, I have negative 10x divided by negative 10 gives me x. Now, I don't have less than or equal to anymore because that made me flip the sign. So now I have greater than or equal to. The equal to just comes along for the ride. 110 divided by negative 10 gives me negative 11. Put negative 11 on my graph. This time it's a closed circle and my arrow again goes to the right because I have x is greater than or equal to negative 11. All right, number three. First I'm going to get rid of the 17, minus 17 on both sides. Leaves me over here with negative 3x. 62 minus 17 is 45. Okay, I'm not done yet. X is not by itself. 17 minus 17 doesn't become zero because I still have a minus 3x. So to get rid of a minus 3 times x, I have to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Over here I have x. Did I flip my sign? Yes, I just divided by a negative. So now instead of less than, I'm going to have greater than. And 45 divided by negative 3 is negative 15. Put negative 15 on my number line. Closed circle because of that. Oh, sorry. Open circle because there is no equal or underline underneath the symbol. 
and the arrow goes to the right in the direction of bigger numbers. Last one. Again, we're going to get rid of the plus 16 first, we're doing a negative minus 16. Subtract 16 from both sides. I have still a 2x over here. <clears throat> that 2 doesn't go away when I subtract 16. The 2 has to stay, making this a two-step equation. Negative 12 minus 16 is negative 28. Now I can divide by a positive 2. I'm dividing by a positive number, so I do not flip the sign. I have x is greater than or equal to negative 14. Put negative 14 on my number line, closed circle this time, arrow goes to the right. All right, have the sub pause the video if you need it, and we'll move on to our next assignment. All right, last page. We are almost done, folks. All right, this is similar to what we did for our self-start. We're going to write an inequality that matches these keywords. Now, there are three components you need for every one of these situations. One is a variable, one is that inequality sign, and one is a number. Okay, a lot of you were just writing that. That's not enough. I need to see what side your variable's on, I need to see the inequality symbol, and I need to see the number. And just so you know, on every single one of these, I want your variable on the left. So go ahead and just do that right now. Make sure your variable is on the left for every single one. That becomes really important when you're trying to graph and make sense of what your inequality solution means. You must keep your variables on the left. All right, now number one, let's see, that was just a guess. It might turn out to be right. X is some inequality symbol, and then there's 15 people. So X is more than 15 people. Well, is 14 more than 15? No. So I don't want the numbers that are smaller than 15. I want the numbers that are bigger than 15. And I want x to be bigger than 15. Now, is 15 more than 15? No, it is not. So I do not underline that symbol. All right. Now we have x and we have 10 cats and I need less than 10 cats. Well, that's an easy one because that's just the same name as the symbol. Less than 10 cats. 10 cats are not okay, so I do not underline. At most, four hot dogs. Now, if I say at most four, you can eat at most four hot dogs. Can you eat those four hot dogs? Yes, you can. So we're going to underline that one. 4 goes over here, and at most. So are, are 3 hot dogs okay to eat? Yes. So I want the numbers that are smaller than 4, because 5 hot dogs are not okay to eat in that situation. Okay, again, we have at least $50. So maybe I need to earn at least $50. Is $50 okay? Yes, it is. I'm going to underline. And then I want numbers that are bigger than $50. Because if I earn only $49, that's not okay. I need at least $50. No more than 22 tests. My starting number is 22. No more than means, is 22 okay? Yes, it is because 22 is not more than 22. No more than means I want less than. I want the numbers that are smaller than 22. Not more than 22. Not 23. Not 24. No more than. And conversely, no fewer than 35 cupcakes. 
my starting number is 35. No fewer means, hey, there might be 35 third graders this time, and we need to make sure they all get a cupcake. So 35 is fine. We're going to underline our inequality symbol, but I want it to be 35 or more. I want bigger than 35 cupcakes. Okay, maximum 400 miles per hour. So your uh, race car can go for a maximum of 400 miles per hour. Starting number is 400. Can it go 450 miles an hour? No, it can't. I need the numbers that are smaller than 400. Can it go 400 miles an hour? Yes, yes it can. The meaning of maximum includes that 400. A minimum of six bales of hay. So my starting number is six. Six works. If I have six bales of hay, I'm fine. If I have seven, eight, nine, ten bales of hay, I'm also fine. So I want those numbers that are bigger than, greater than, six. Fewer than eight questions. Fewer than is a synonym, synonym for less than. Okay, eight is not fewer than eight, so it does not get underlined. Up to five hours. Now, this one, I am going to say that you could do less than five hours or you could do less than or equal to five hours on that one. That one's a little bit ambiguous, but it will be in the less than direction because five is the most that you want to have. Okay, a budget of $300. Again, if I have $300 in my pocket, I can spend $300. I can spend less than $300, but I cannot spend more than $300. And below 52 degrees is going to be less than 52. 52 is not below 52, so it's not included, not underlined. All right, finish those up. Have to sub pause the video if you need to, and then come back. We're going to do a couple of freebie problems on today's assignment. Okay, today's assignment. Now, this is just what you're going to work on until the end of class today. Please do not do it for homework tonight. Let me say that again. Please do not do this assignment for homework tonight. I want you to work on it in class as much as you can. And then when you come tomorrow, we're going to do the front and the back of this worksheet. Okay, I do not think you will have time to get to the back today. So we're going to save that portion of it for tomorrow. For today, I'm going to do three freebie problems for you. First one is the first one under letter A right here. I'm going to set up my fence. Now, in this problem, my x is on the wrong side. I want my variable always on the left, but the way we're going to deal with that is to solve it where it is and then mirror it at the end. And I'll show you what that means, which is why I'm doing this problem for you. Now, I have negative 1 is less than x plus 7. I need to get rid of the plus 7, so I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Negative 1 minus 7, if you put that in your calculator, is negative 8. And over here, x plus 7 minus 7 leaves me with just x. Now, I subtracted 7, but that's not multiplying, that's not dividing, so I don't flip my sign. I end up with 8 is less than x. Now, if I just switch sides and do x is less than negative 8, Are these two inequalities the same thing? Does this inequality mean the same thing as this one? Talk about that for a couple of seconds. They don't. They actually mean completely different things. The, hopefully you remember that Pac-Man is going to e eat the bigger number. In this inequality... Pac-Man is eating the x because x is the bigger number. But down here, 
Pac-Man is eating the negative 8, saying that negative 8 is the bigger number. Both of those statements cannot be true. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this one. And we're going to pretend like there's a mirror image right here. And we're going to mirror this inequality across. So I'm going to have x, but then Pac-Man is going to still eat the x. Over here, Pac-Man's eating the x. Pac-Man's still going to eat the x. And we're going to put negative 8 right here. I am going to be a stickler on this. I want your variable on the left-hand side. So be sure that you solve your inequality with the x where it is and then mirror it at the end. That's the best way to make sure you don't make any mistakes. All right, the second freebie I'm gonna give you is this one right here, the third one on letter B. This one's tricky because I have two x's. If I have two x's, how do I solve this inequality? Well, the short answer is you can't. You have to combine like terms first. So I have 3x plus 5x. 3x's plus 5x's gives me 8x's. And then I have plus 4. There's no variable in that one, so I can't combine those terms. Is greater than 4. Now I only have 1x. Now I can solve. Subtract 4 from both sides. Leaves me 8x here. 4 minus 4 is 0 on that side. Divide both sides by 8. Leaves me x right here. 0 divided by 8 is 0. And my inequality symbol, I never divided by a negative. I subtracted 4, but I did not divide by a negative, so my inequality stays greater than. x is greater than 0. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to do for you today. 4 is less than or equal to negative 6x plus 6, all divided by 6. Okay, here's my fence. First thing I'm going to get rid of is this 6. So I'm going to divide by 6 on both sides. Oops. All right, what did I do wrong? All right, the last problem I'm going to do for you is this one. The second one on the C row. 4 is less than or equal to negative 6x plus 6 divided by 6. Set up my fence. The first thing I'm going to get rid of is this 6 right here. It's uh, this side is being divided by 6, so I'm going to times by 6 on both sides. 4 times 6 is 24. Over here I have left negative 6x plus 6. So these 6s go away, but everything else stays right there. And now I have negative 6x plus 6. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides to get rid of this 6 over here, 24 minus 6 is 18, and over here I got rid of this 6 and this 6, but I still have minus 6x, so I need to divide both sides by minus 6. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm going to always start at the top and type in 18 divided by negative 6 gives me, I'm going to move down here, negative 3. And negative 6x divided by negative 6 gives me just x. Now I divided by a negative 6. My original problem starts with a less than or equal to, but when I divide by that negative 6, it makes me flip the sign to be greater than or equal to. Now, the last tricky part about this problem is that x is on the right. So I have to draw my mirror line and I'm going to change it to x. Now x is by the small side of Pac-Man, so he's going to stay by the small side of Pac-Man. 
x is going to be less than negative 3, less than or equal to negative 3. All right, work on the rest of those problems. Again, do not do this for homework. You will have time to work on it in class tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you soon.